I love to go for, for long walks. To me, that's one of the most peaceful things uh, that I can do. And where we live, uh, there's, there's, I've, I've got this nice little route that is up a pretty steep hill, but at the top of that hill, I can see the whole Auburn Valley. It's just beautiful up there. I've seen, even though there are a lot of houses there, uh, I've seen deer uh, among, the, among the houses. There, there's this one little cul-de-sac that I love to go to that has beautiful homes and these gorgeous lawns and everything, beautiful landscaping. And I just love going up there. So when I, when I go up there, because it is up a steep hill, that's usually just me and God. But I love going with God on a walk. But I also love going with, uh, with Shelly or with other family members or friends. I just, I love going on a walk. There, there's something about that beautiful destination where I can get up and I can see, see the valley, see the view. But also the journey, just the walk itself, is, it's refreshing. For me, it's a way to de-stress it's a way to have just some quiet time of conversation either with God, if I'm by myself or, or with, with whoever I'm with. It strengthens my relationship with whoever I'm walking with. Uh, for me, a walk changes my perspective. It, it can sometimes just help me to get my nose out of the problems or the struggles or the confusion and just lift up my eyes and, and see a, just a different perspective, a different view on life. And today, I want to talk to you about our walk with God. So a little bit more on that later. Why don't you turn, if you have a Bible, to Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7. And we typically read out of the NLT translation. So if you have a Bible, a Bible on your app, why don't you choose NLT? So that, that, you, that, that'll be an easy thing for you to do there. If you have a Bible in your hands, if you brought a Bible with you, I encourage you to get God's Word out. So I, I'm only going to focus, I, I only plan to focus on a short portion of Scripture today, but if you have your Bible on your lap, you can see what's before it, what's after it, you can reread it, all that stuff. I had a, a professor in, in Bible college that used this phrase that I don't know why this phrase stuck with me. It's very odd, but I just remember him saying, salvation is punctiliar and progressive. And as I was even preparing this message, I just wanted to make sure I was on the right track, spelling it right, that it was the right word. It's not even in my dictionary app. I had to look through several dictionaries. I finally found it in the Oxford English Dictionary. It is a word, punctiliar, and it just simply means at a point in time. So salvation happens at a point in time, but it is also progressive. It is an ongoing thing in your life. The vision that God has given us as a congregation is this, to see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. That's our vision. That's our mission. That's why we do what we do. That's why we have the name that we have for our church, Hope and Life Church. We believe this is what God's called us to do, is to see every person find real hope and renewed life in Jesus. But you know what? This too is punctiliar and progressive. I just love that word. It's not a word that you hear every day for sure. But you can find real hope in Jesus in a moment. We might call that a breakthrough. You, you can find renewed life where you are going one direction and all of a sudden you're going a different direction in a moment, in a point in time. But also you find real hope and renewed life progressively. It's a process. And it, it, it keeps going or it's supposed to. We're starting a new, a new series today, a series of messages called Renew. Everybody say renew. 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 And the subtitle is, You Have Been Raised to New Life with Christ. That's taken from a verse in the book of Colossians. And we're going to be going into just uh, not the entire book of Colossians in the Bible, but uh, a good portion of it, probably more this center portion of the book. It is, it is a letter written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by uh, the Apostle Paul, an early church leader, and Timothy to the, to the Christians 
in a certain city, the city of Colossae. So Colossians sounds like this, uh, you know, weird thing. What does that even mean? It's sort of like saying uh, it's a letter to the Seattleites. It, it is, that, that's that word Colossians. It, it is a letter on how to live the Christian life, the renewed life in Jesus to the group of people that lived in that city. And so today I want to talk to you about a lifelong process, a lifelong process. And we're going to open up God's word, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7. And now, just as you accepted, now I'm going to just kind of stop as we go through this verse. These two verses, 6 and 7, are, they're really in a, in a way the summary of the whole book of Colossians. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord. That word accepted, we have come to think that when you accept Jesus, that is punctiliar. That it just happens in a moment, you say a prayer, bam, you're saved, you've accepted Jesus. But that is not what the root word, what this, what this, the root word of this word means. This word accepted, so other translators uh, translate it received, it is through teaching and training. It implies a process. It is a process. Unfortunately, when we see it in English, we think accepted is something you just do like in a moment. But you can also accept Jesus over a lifetime. You, you can receive him over and over again. You can be in a process of accepting Jesus, of receiving him. Now, I, I love that uh, he uses uh, the, this title, Christ Jesus as your Lord. So it's not just accepting in your mind Jesus is holy or Jesus is God's son, but it's accepting him as your savior, your forgiver, and your Lord or your leader. So, so Paul is saying, now let's think back on the process that you went through when you accepted Jesus, when you received Christ Jesus as your Lord. And then he says, in that same way, now remember that there was a process. In that same way, you must continue. Somebody say continue. You must continue to follow him. It's a lifelong process process. Some of us who have been saved for a long, long time think, oh yes, I accepted Jesus a long time ago. There was a moment in time. But Paul is talking about that, let's remember, it actually was a process. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along today. It was a process to accept him. And that process continues. He says, you must continue to follow him in this lifelong process. And then he uses some picturesque language, he says, let your roots grow down into him. And I was just thinking where we live in the Pacific Northwest, probably the most, uh, the, the tree that you see most frequently is the Douglas fir. It is an evergreen tree, super tall. It can grow super tall. It is green year round. It's beautiful. It's almost a symbol of where we live. But the Douglas fir, it's kind of cool. When you plant the Douglas fir, what the first thing that happens with its roots is its roots go down deep. It develops uh, over the first couple of years a tap root. It goes straight down a main root that goes down deep into the soil, like ten feet. And then as the tree keeps growing and, and the, that process of growing just keeps going on in that Douglas fir, the roots begin to spread sideways and they begin to spread 10 feet out. So 10 feet down first and then 10 feet out. And that's such a cool, cool picture of how when you and I accept Jesus through the process of salvation, that we first must have our roots go down deep into Jesus. That's first. And that is, uh, Paul said, you've got to continue to follow Jesus, continue to let your root go down deep in Jesus. But it's also a really cool picture of our roots spreading out because we also need to be connected to one another. In order to follow Jesus the way we were meant to follow Jesus, we have to be, have our roots down deep in him and connected to each other. So let your gr roots grow down into him, into Jesus. And let your lives be built on him. So he switches metaphors. 
Uh, and so he, he, he first says that you got to walk in the Lord, follow him. And then he says you got to be planted like a tree. And then he says you got to be built like a building. Let your lives be built on him. And I'm just thinking, you know, as we look around here, even today, have you noticed we're looking so much better? We have new carpet. You can see we left a little old carpet, uh, which is the footprint of our new stage. So if you're curious about that, it will be a, a little bit expanded. Hoping to cram all of us up here at once is going to be awesome and cozy. But there was a long time when we started our big remodel of this church where it seemed like nothing was happening. People were busy here every day, man. They were cutting a concrete. They were chipping out concrete. They were adding footings where we were going to add walls. They, they were getting the plumbing ready. They were getting all the infrastructure ready. They were so busy. But when you looked, it's just like, man, it just seemed like nothing was going on. But you have to have that foundation first in order to build on it. And once we had that foundation all nice and secure, then, then it, the building got, uh, it was much more rapid. You began to see the growth and the improvement. And, and that's, that's what our church was. I, I, we can see it. Uh, it's still in process. We're, not, we're not, still not done. We've got wires dangling out of the ceiling over there. Oh, there's, there's a little bit more to do, yes. But you can see that when your lives are built on a good foundation, it can grow, it can expand, it can improve. And that's what's been happening here through planning, time, consistency, showing up every day, and effort. Our building is growing. And so now we've gone from a building that had maybe 6,000 square foot of usable space. Now we have 12,000 feet of usable space. We've made room for a lot more people to come and find Jesus. Yeah. And, and we, are, we, we are ready. We are ready to minister to more as God gives the increase. Okay, so I'm going on in uh, Colossians 2, 6, and 7. So after all this, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. Other translators say you will be established in the Christian faith and walk with Jesus. And you will overflow, somebody say overflow, overflow. with thankfulness. Wow. Have you ever been around a person who's just thankful all the time? Uh, I, I, I love it. It's so encouraging. Uh, like you, you might find yourself saying, oh man, I wish this thing was different. And someone points out, well, at least God's been doing this in your life. At least he's provided in this way. And you go, yes, that's right. And you're just encouraged. That happens when you realize all that God is doing in your life. So uh, uh, let me just read it again. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. I want to read it in a couple other translations because you see some different things. So the, the Bible was not written in English. And so to, for us English speakers to read it, someone has to translate it for us. And, and you know that there, you can bring out different nuances as you translate. So in the ESV, this is a Bible that has a very strict literal translation. Here's how it sounds. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And what caught my attention is that we are to walk in Jesus, not just follow behind, not even just with him beside, but walk in him, in his strength, in his direction, in his power, in his life. Walk in Christ Jesus, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. The faith is the good news about Jesus and all of its implications for your life, just as you are taught, abounding in thanksgiving. And then one other translation is the Common English Bible. This was written, it was, I mean, it was translated in such a way they chose words that were a little simpler so that people of any age could understand. And I just thought it was just beautifully translated. So, live in Christ Jesus the Lord in the same way as you received him. Be rooted and built up in him. Be established in faith and overflow with thanksgiving just as you were taught. I love it. So are you getting this picture that God has a plan for you that takes you beyond where you are at this moment in time? It is a plan for you to continue to walk in Jesus, to follow him. So what's God doing? He's calling me. He's calling you. He's calling all of us to live a life 
in Jesus, where you're rooted, build up, established in the faith, and overflowing with thanksgiving, where you can't even help it. You don't even have to choose to be thankful and grateful. You're just, you're being built up in God, and you're so grateful, it just pours out of you in words and actions of thanksgiving. So the good news I see here is God wants you growing stronger in your faith and overflowing with thanksgiving. That's what God wants for your life. That's what God wants for my life. God wants you growing stronger in your faith and overflowing with thanksgiving. That's my message today. That is, that's my message from the Word of God for us today. The Christian life is a never-ending process. It is a progression. It's not just punctiliar. It's not just a point in time, I raised my hand to say, I want to put my faith in Jesus, now I'm done, take me to heaven. That's not how it goes. It is just simply the start. And I, I was thinking about this, um, things in our lives that are a process. Have you ever bought a car? I don't know if you can think back to your first car. But when, when, when you're a young person, most likely, and, and you're getting ready for your first car, you're thinking, I got places to go. I got stuff to do. I've got friends to see. I got to get to school. I got to get my after school job. Whatever it is, you, you, there's something in your life that you want to be different. I I'm not as mobile as I want. I'm not as free. I can't get to that job. Uh, I can remember my first job was delivering furniture for a local furniture company, uh, in a uh, uh, furniture store in my hometown of Port Orchard. And I got the job just before I turned 16. And so I had to walk to work for the, for the first few times. And it was like five miles from my house. It was so far. And I just could not wait until I could get a car and drive to work. It was, it was so much better. So there was something in my life that I wanted to be different and perhaps for you, maybe you're, you're long beyond your first car, but there, there's something that happens when you have a car for a while, and, and you begin to think, you know what, I would like a different car. Like, like for example, maybe your car is paid off, but it, you just have to keep bringing it to the mechanic. It's so old, there's just always something going wrong with it, it's crazy, it's like, it's costing me so much money, you think, if I put that money towards buying a new car, maybe I wouldn't have to go to the, to the mechanic so long, or so often. So you, you, there's a process of where you begin to be dissatisfied with something. You want something to be different, and so you start looking around. Uh, she, Shelly and I do this on the road sometimes, I think, oh, that's a cool car, Oh, that's a cool car. What's, write that one down. What's, what's, what's that car? I, I like the shape of that car. And you begin looking around. Maybe you talk to your friends, and you start exploring, well, what would be a good car like for my family, if you're in a family stage? Or what would be a good commuter car if I'm in a commuter phase? And, and you start exploring the possibilities. Maybe you read some online reviews, and, and you begin to just sort of explore. Maybe you take a test drive on, on a couple different cars as you're trying to figure it out. Well, then you go... I've, I, I've made up my mind. I know the car I want. I'm, you go make the deal. Now, if you're going to go to a dealer, bring snacks because it will probably take you seven hours while they go check with their manager about the, about the latest iteration of the deal. Uh, wow, it, it's amazing what goes on in that back room. I think they're just back there having snacks. And they're like, let's keep them waiting. Let's build the tension. I don't know what they're doing. But, but it is pretty funny. So, you, so you, you buy the car, you make the deal, and you know what? You could just stop there. You could just pay your money, leave the car right there at the dealer or at the person's house. You could just leave it there. You could leave it there forever. At least you're a car owner, yeah. right? I mean, you, problem solved. But the, the thing is, if you stop it there, if you, I mean, if you just leave it there, you're not getting to drive it. You're not getting the full benefits of, of, of using the car that you just bought. At some point, you might even be in danger of losing that car. And I think the dealer is not going to leave that, that car that you paid for. They're not going to leave it parked right by their front door forever. It's eventually going to get moved somewhere, maybe even sold to somebody else, but you're in danger of losing it. Or you might start settling. If you just leave the car there, you pay for it, you leave the car there, you might start settling for just walking. Well, you know, I, I haven't picked up the car yet, but I, I could just walk today, or I could just bum a ride from a friend today. And, and the, the trouble is, you're not getting the full benefit of that relationship with that car. Your relationship with the car isn't supposed to culminate at the purchase. 
that's where it starts. That's where, that's, where you, that's where finally you get the benefit of that car. Now, once you get a new car, you need to figure out how to use it. Now, in, uh, Pastor Shelley and I each have a car, and everything, all the controls are opposite. And it's, it's so confusing to me. Every time I get in, in her car, I always turn the windshield wiper the wrong way. Because, like, on mine, it goes up. On hers, it goes down. And it, it is like that. All the controls, they're, they're, it's opposite day. And it's very frustrating, but when you get a new car, you need, to, you need to learn how to use it, how to adjust the seats, or if, if, wow, if you have a family, maybe it has a DVD player, you need to figure out how to use it, how to use the entertainment system, all that kind of stuff, how to fold down the seats, so that you're confident to drive it, and you're taking full advantage of the benefits. But you also got to learn how to take care of that car. You need to know how do you check, how do you check the fluids, how do you check the tire pressure, and that's about all I can see. Today, in the, in the cars today, they're like shrouded in a big thing that just has dollar signs for the dealer on it in the, in the engine. But you got to learn to take care of as much as you can take care of. That's your responsibility. But you know what? It's ultimately not just about where you, where you want to go, but it's also about the destination. Just think of the, the road trips you can take in that car, who you can go with. Uh, maybe you take a road trip with your family or with your buddies. And, and just think of all the joy, all the pleasure you can get out of that car. Well, that's a process, isn't it? It wasn't just punctilier, I got a car. It's a, pro- it's a progressive process. Same thing with your faith, with your life in Jesus. You most likely accepted Jesus progressively through a process. It's, it's different for everybody, but most likely it wasn't just you're like walking down the street one day, you have not thought about God at all, and then just bam, you put your faith in Jesus. Usually there's a little bit of process. Maybe some friends have been talking to you. Maybe you've heard a little Christian radio and you're just kind of curious, or, or maybe you've been examining your life and you think, man, I feel like something's missing. I, 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 I'm, I'm not doing anything Uh, about the spiritual side of my life. And you begin, there's an ache or a hunger that comes, or maybe you have an awakening to your sin. And you just think, uh, wow, this is not the way I want to live with my life. But there's a process. And so that that gets you looking, that gets you seeking. Maybe you come and and visit a church service or or more than one. And and, and you start, you just start exploring it. There's a a moment in time when you might have put your faith in Jesus, if you have already, but it was a process getting there, and the process doesn't stop there. Just because you put your faith in Jesus, that's not where you stop. You're not suddenly done. As Paul said, you must continue to walk in Jesus. It's a choice. It takes effort. It takes time to follow Jesus. And what are we to do? We, we are to grow stronger in your faith and overflow with thanksgiving. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to persist until you understand the gospel, the good news about Jesus, so, and, and all of its implications for your life, to the point that you could confidently explain that process to someone else. If you cannot explain that process to someone else yet, you've got, you got a ways to go. Let's, let's get you there. Let's, let's figure out what has Jesus done for you? What is the good news? And how can you explain that to somebody else so that they too can put their faith in Jesus? Uh, you, you continue in your walk with Jesus until you can be a role model. You might think, I'm not a role model. Well, get there. Let's do it. Let's all be a role model for someone else that someone else could watch how you follow Jesus and say, I could follow Jesus like that. Continue to follow him. Put your roots down in him. Instead of keeping your options open, decide you're in with Jesus. Be rooted in him. Be built on him. Be solid. Don't be flaky. Be consistently following Jesus. Put your faith into practice more and more every day until the joy kicks in. Why is this so important? That phrase, I I love it because in the chosen Bible series that we're watching this video series and then we have groups that take that topic that was in each episode on Sunday nights, on Wednesday nights, we're discussing this. And Jesus said to the man who was not able to walk, he was paralyzed, uh, sitting by the pool, Jesus said to him, take up your mat and walk. 
And we, uh, it's one of the things we discussed in our groups. It's such a cool thing. And the man says, why is it so important? I t- pick up my mat and walk. And Peter says to him, because you're not coming back here. You're not staying in this, this place of limitation and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, a paralysis, but you're actually, you're not coming back, so take up your mat. There's nothing here to call you back to that life. And so I love that. That's why, that's why I wanted to slip that phrase into this message. Why is it so important to continue to follow Jesus? Well, because it's possible to get stuck in your progress. It, it's possible to, to all of a sudden look at your life and go, I'm not... I'm not getting any closer to Jesus. I, I, I don't feel like I know him any better today than I did a year ago. It's possible to get stuck there. It's even possible to go astray and, and to just slowly veer off from following Jesus until one day you wake up and realize, I'm not really following him anymore. I, I, I don't really know him anymore. He, I'm, he's not my leader of my life anymore. And I don't have time to go into it today, but that is what happened in the church in the city of Colossae. There were some people that just began to believe some whacked stuff. And they were saying they're following Jesus, but they were saying, but make sure you follow these certain Old Testament laws. And they were saying, you need to have these kind of ecstatic, mystic experiences, or else you're not saved. And and they began to just slowly veer off. And Paul wrote the book of Colossians to say, hey, let's get back to your faith in Jesus. And don't be adding a bunch of stuff to it. Jesus did all the work. Put your faith in him. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 20, well, I'll just just read 23. But, But you must continue to believe this truth. And he's been talking about salvation through Jesus' work alone. And stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. Here's the thing. We cannot just follow Jesus by default. We can't just say, I put my faith in him once. I hope I'm good. Because naturally, there's so much in our world and so much in our flesh that is going to distract us until it's very easy to go astray. And I'm here to to tell you today, please don't go astray. The Apostle Paul said it to us long ago, and we, I, I'm saying it to me and to us today. Today, you and I are bombarded with so much information and opinion. I don't know about you, but I sometimes get sick of opinions. That's my opinion. <laughs> it seems like the Jesus-centered life, it's just so, it's like it's a moving target. Where is it? Because some are saying this, some are saying that. How, how do you even know? There's so many voices. How do you even know how God is calling you to live? And does it really matter what you believe as long as you're sincere? I mean, can't you just believe anything? Like, just can't everybody just believe whatever? Can't you just have your own truth? And can I just have my own truth? Well, we need to find out the answers to these questions. So please be back each Sunday during these series. And we're going to talk about some stuff like that. Do behaviors really matter in following Jesus? Can't everybody just kind of do whatever they want, whatever they feel like? As long as you're not hurting anybody. Does it matter how you treat your spouse, your kids, your parents? Does it matter? Does it matter whether you drink a little, smoke a little weed, swear, do a little online gaming, view a little porn? Does it matter? Does it matter? Can you still be a Christian and do those things? What about the occasional social media rant? Isn't that okay? As long as you're, as long as you're attacking someone that disagrees with you, isn't that just okay? Hmm, is it? Let's find out. Stay tuned for Colossians. God wants you growing stronger in your faith and overflowing with thanksgiving. He wants it just you, you to be so thankful in your heart for all God's doing that it just bubbles out in your speech and your action. So how do you actually solidify your faith, get rooted, get established in Jesus? How do you walk in Jesus? That's what this series is about. And so today, I'm mainly whetting your appetite for these next few weeks, so be sure and be here. Why don't we live the good news? The good news is that God wants you to be rooted. He wants you to be established. He wants you to overflow with thanksgiving. Why don't, we, why don't we just embrace that? Why don't we just continue to follow Jesus then? Why don't we experience that? Well, so many times, you don't have a clear picture of the life God's calling you to. 
And he calls us to some very specific things. You might assume that what you're experiencing following Jesus is all there is. You might feel confused or even uninformed about where you're supposed to be headed. So that, that might be one reason we don't get, you know, embrace this good news and get rooted, built up, walk in Jesus. So many times you and I get distracted or we get overwhelmed and we just, our, our sight just gets off of Jesus just a little bit and onto our situation. I don't know where you're at today. You might be yearning for something more. You might be just wishing you could be closer to God. Feel him near you. Hear his voice speaking to you and leading you. You might even feel a little jealous of some, some of your friends or, or, or people you see online that just seem to hear Jesus so clearly and they just say, yeah, Jesus was telling me this thing the other day. Man, you, you want that. Maybe what you've tried is not getting you there. It's, it's not working. So what if you could lean into God's desire for you to be close to him? What if you could lean into God's plan for you to be rooted, built up, and established in Jesus? What if you really started growing your roots down into Jesus, firmly planted into him, and a wider into your community of faith at Hope and Life Church? And what if you kept doing that as a process until your final breath? What could happen then? Well, I, I know what would happen. You'd be so strong and confident in your walk with God that you'd be able to help others follow Jesus. Your life would be so blessed that no one has to tell you to be thankful. You just be thankful. It'd just be flowing out all the time. You'd just be saying, and Jesus did this, and God showed me that, and my life is so great. You'd be so thankful to God. So a good place to start, and this is, this is not the end all, but this is just a good place to start, is consistency in gathering with other people who are following Jesus. You're here today. Great job. You have put yourself in a situation, in an environment where people are worshiping the Lord, where we're giving, where we're praying, where we're hearing God's word brought to us. Good job. Keep it up. I just encourage you, why not make yourself a goal to be in the house of God every Sunday during this series over the next several weeks? What would happen? What would change in you with that consistency? Uh, I, I want to challenge you, if you're not part of a group, to be a part of a group. That is where we're prayed for with each other. Uh, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, all ages are gathering together. We're gathering together. We're spurring one another on to good works. We're talking about the Bible, and we're praying, and we're, we're just being in fellowship, and our roots are getting more connected to each other so that when a storm comes, we're not toppling over because we're solid. We're solid. We have, an, we have our roots in Jesus and a network in believers. So I, I just want to encourage you. Let's just start there. There's a lot more in the book of Colossians about this renewed life that God is calling us to. But let's just start by just consistently gathering. That's a great place to start. God wants you growing stronger in your faith and overflowing with thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what he wants for you. What a great life. Would you stand to your feet? And let's, let's pray. Would you just bow your heads with me for a moment? Just kind of shutting out distractions. We're going to talk to Jesus. And Jesus, I just thank you so much for your word. You, you have such a good plan for our lives. Lord, when we hear all the plans and the information, all the opinions around us, it, it, it can just, we can feel like we're on, a, 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 on a, a, a seesaw, just going this way and that. We're just, we're just being pulled back and forth like a tug of war. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to get solid with you. Some of us already feel solid, so I pray you take us deeper, further, higher in you to the point where we could help other people get solid as well. And then they could help other people get solid. With your head still bowed, I'm wondering how many of you would say, I just want to go deeper in Jesus. I want to be more established in him. Can I just see your hands? I want my roots to be deeper. I want my connections to be deeper with the body of Christ. I want to be, I want to walk in Jesus. I want to find out what that's like. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? And Jesus, you see our raised hands, and we're just saying to you, 
Help us, Lord. Yes, we're saying yes to your invitation. Yes, we want to be stronger. Yes, we want to be more uh, 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 rooted in you, grounded in you, established in you, built up in you. Lord, I pray, Jesus, like a master builder, that you would take us on as apprentices, that we would learn how to follow you. Lord, and that we would begin to think like you, walk like you, love like you, make a difference like you in our world. So, Lord, take us further, deeper, higher in you, Lord. Build us up. Lord, I just pray you would encourage every person, that you would build us up, make us all that you have in mind for us when we accepted you, Lord. Help us in this lifelong process. Help us to not say, I've arrived. Help us to keep going. Help us to keep following you. Help us to make some new choices. Help us to take up some new habits if that's what it takes to get closer to you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, with your head still bowed, I don't know if you have put your faith in Jesus yet. I don't know if you've started to walk in Jesus yet. If you have not, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ, to accept him as your Lord. You've been in a process of going to church, maybe starting to read the Bible. You've been in a process and you're, you're, you're exploring, you've been exploring, but you haven't actually sealed the deal. You haven't accepted his offer of eternal life. I want to invite you today, right now, in this moment, at this point, to cross that line of faith and say, yes, Jesus, I put my faith in you. How do you do that? Turn from your sins. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. If today you are ready, I know you've been in a process, but if today is your decision point to put your faith in Jesus, would you raise your hand? Whether you're in the room and I see hands going up already, I'm very encouraged by that. Or whether you're online, you could raise your hands to God. That's so great, you guys. I, I've been watching some of you in a process, and today you're saying, I'm putting my faith in Jesus. Here's how you do it. Let's just pray. And, and church, would you pray with me? And if you raised your hand, would you pray this to Jesus right now? Pray it from your heart with faith. Let's do it. Let's out loud. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. On the inside, on the outside, I choose to follow you, to walk in you, and be your apprentice, starting now, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And several people put their faith in Jesus today. I am so happy for you. Now, guess what? That was punctilier, right? But the process needs to keep going. Okay, you can't just stop there and say I'm good. So tell us a little bit about some next steps we can take. Awesome. Well, we all learned a new word today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I encourage you, we encourage you, if today was your day, or if you were just a new believer and you want to know what is the process, how do I follow Jesus, we have a great resource for you. It's called the Following Jesus Course. So if you... if after service, if you stop by the lobby, there's a big sign that says following Jesus. I'll be there at the table with sanitizer on my hands, I promise. And I'll, I'll, hand, you, I'll hand you a book and the free course. And I, we, we just encourage you in that. It's such a great, easy seven steps. Um, it's like a 50-page book on how to follow Jesus. And we're, we're, we're not just throwing the book at you. We're, we're here to walk alongside you and help you in that process too. All right? So we love you. Please, if, if today's your day or if you're a new believer, please pick that up, and we'd love to equip you for that. And then if you filled out the Connect card, um, please drop that in the box on your way out. And are we doing setup today? I don't think so, are we? A little bit? Oh, yeah, so, so if you could help us with a little bit of, of setting up for groups, setting up the circle in the back, and then also in the um, pre-K room, that would be awesome. We love you guys. God bless.